Hello everyone, today I am going to be presenting the Banana Wars. Before we talk about the wars themselves, you should learn a bit of background regarding the Banana Republics. Banana Republics were what American companies called the smaller countries in Latin America that they colonized and used for their plantations. These plantations were basically American cities and neighborhoods living next to farms that mass produced and exported bananas. Next, we can move on to the Banana Wars themselves. The Banana War started in 1898 and ended in 1934, when Franklin D. Roosevelt decided to improve relationships with Latin America rather than continue to destroy them, which we all know the U.S. has a long, extensive history of doing. The Banana Wars were a series of military conflicts America inflicted on the people living in Central America, namely to keep the citizens quiet and prevent resistance. There were many incidents of mass murder, including this one in Colombia where 3,000 workers were on strike and were killed in order to maintain peace. Because these countries were so weak already, the U.S. would force them into giving them more and more land with forced treaties. Let's take a step back. How did bananas even get to Central America to begin with? What made them so popular? Bananas first came to Latin America on Portuguese boats coming from Africa in the 1500s, but they didn't get America's attention until around the 1800s. They became quite a popular crop in Central America, specifically, and contributed to the great export boom in 1870 to 1930, which helped the middle class grow and the agricultural industry blossom. Of course, like all good things in Latin America, the U.S. had to step in and meddle and quickly ruined the economic progress of these countries. When the U.S. colonized these countries, they created banana towns where Americans would live peaceful, fulfilling lives, while the citizens of the countries the companies have destroyed were suffering in misery and chaos. These banana towns were closed off from the rest of the outside world. Bananas would be exchanged for American goods like newspapers and other forms of entertainment. Native inhabitants were used for the hard labor and thereby reinforced racial and class issues in their societies. There was one major monopoly in the fruit industry called United Fruits Co. The first person to make a profit off of Central American banana farming was an entrepreneur called Minor C. Keith. He originally intended on making a railroad in Costa Rica, but quickly changed his mind to a steamboat line to transport bananas to the U.S. However, Keith's business was slowly falling apart because he was in crippling debt. So one of his competitors, Boston Fruit Co., bought his company and they became United Fruit Co. Together, they joined forces to reinstate tyranny over these poor countries. Costa Rica, Honduras, Guatemala, Nicaragua, Panama, Colombia, Haiti, and Venezuela. The local governments wished to benefit from these new trade routes, but the U.S. decided to selfishly make their own railroads to use for themselves. They did not contribute to the economies of the countries they invaded in the slightest. As this native citizen describes, the United Fruit Co. was authoritarian and did what it wanted with the people. They used pesticides and herbicides and only cared to benefit the Americans without any respect or consideration of the land they were abusing. Eventually, banana companies pulled out of these countries, but not without significant damage. They ruined the land and society. Citizens had no jobs anymore, small businesshood had fallen apart, and a whole generation was without education. The soil was no longer farmable. While major exploitation of these plantations are mostly gone, the social and economic aftermaths are far from that. Central American citizens who used to be rural mass migrated to urban areas in search for job opportunities, which greatly increased the number of cities in, in Latin America. United Fruit Co. still exists today, it just has a new name called Chiquita. There was a controversy recently when a U.S.-born clothing brand named Banana Republic used the name along with tropical exploration clothes as a reference to the tragedy. This was not well received, and Banana Republic uh, ended up changing its aesthetic and the clothing that it sold, but it still has the same name. The term Banana Republic is culturally ingrained in these societies, and remains a sensitive issue, understandably so, 
and probably will remain that way for generations to come. Thank you for watching and I hope you learned something interesting.